Praise the Lord. He is there all the time. It's just our feelings sometimes don't know whether he is or not. But by faith we know he is, by revelation. God's everywhere. Let's just stand this morning. Let's remember Brother John Crothers. Other requests here this morning as we would look to the Lord. Who, Sister, Sister Nicole. Nicole, yes. And also, uh, a co worker of ours has contacted us. His wife's been uh, diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. And he'd ask for prayer. So we As well. Okay. All right, let's all bow our heads then. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. I, it's, all right. So let, there's a lot of requests and a lot of things that need to be looked on at this time and we have that privilege of prayer that we can go before the Lord and we can ask that he move on behalf of these things that we've been asking that been brought up before the Lord this morning Heavenly Father as we come before thee we thank you Lord that we can come Lord through the blood of Jesus Christ and I know Father that you seen Lord these requests even before they were made here this morning but, Lord, you wanted to, us, Lord, to say from the lips of our mouth, Lord, to thee. And, Lord, we ask at this time, Lord, that you would meet these needs, Lord, at this time. There may be others, Lord, that has, Lord, maybe unspoken requests, whether it be here or by the way of the Internet. There's no distance with thee, Lord. We are ever so thankful, Lord. Now, as we come to this service, Lord, I pray that you be in every part of it. We ask it all in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated this morning and have Brother Paul to come lead us in song service. So, Lord, it's good to see everyone this morning. Mercy rewrote my life. Mercy. We could do uh, 198 in the blue book here. And you can all sing along. I've been blessed. 
with so many things God's been so good to me I have family and friends to share in all that I do If I was at all Can we try 175? Well, I'm happy every day. Huh? I think so. <laughs> Yes. 
is yet to come. Praise the Lord. There's another wave of glory on the way. Let's get our house in order for the day. It's 182. Let's lift our voices up and praise Jesus. There's another way of glory on the way. The signs of times are flashing all around us. And man grows more wicked every day. But there is coming soon a righteous kingdom. There's another way of glory. in order for the day let's lift our voices up and praise Jesus there's another way of glory on the way the world has closed our eyes and now are sleeping to the prophecies unfolding every day They don't know what you and I know 
there's another way to glory on the way there's another way to glory on the way let's get our house in order for today let's lift our voices up and praise Jesus there's another way Signs of times are flashing all around us And man grows more wicked every day But there is coming soon a righteous kingdom There's another way to glory on the way There's another way to glory Get our house in order for today. Let's lift our voices up and praise Jesus. There's another way of glory on the way. The world has closed our eyes and now are sleeping. To the prophecies unfolding every day. They don't know what you and I know There's another way to glory on the way There's another way to glory on the way Let's get our house in order for the day Let's lift our voices up and praise Jesus Another way to glory on the way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Does anybody have a number in their hearts this morning? 155? And there was somebody else? We'll try 155 and then we'll try that one. In the red book.
Jean, what was that, uh, the other one? God is... I don't know. I can't think of it either. Do you want to sing it, Jean? <laughs> okay. It's coming back. <laughs>
couldn't find the words though. Yes, the answer
song this morning, Another Wave of Glory, I was reading the words of that song. I don't know who wrote them words, but the world has closed their eyes and now we're sweeping to the prophecies unfolding every day. You know, you know, they don't know what you and I know. There's another wave of glory on the way. If it wasn't for the grace of God, and I say this with all that is within me, I have nothing to boast of. I'd be sleeping just like the world is sleeping today. I wouldn't know the things that God has revealed if it wasn't because of His goodness and His mercy and His love. And I am so thankful this morning. My wife and I were talking this week and we were talking about where would we be today if it wasn't for the grace of God? And I look back on my life, I don't remember one time anybody, anybody ever spoke to me concerning the Bible, concerning the Word of God. And I know that I was heading down a road that I didn't know that it would lead to the second death. When I was young, I was enjoying what the world had to offer. I was really happy in the things that I was partaking of because there was no there was nothing convicting me of, of sin. And I stand this morning, and I am so thankful for the Spirit of the living God that yes. reached yes. down, drew me by His Spirit, yes. touched my heart, changed my life, all because of that precious blood of Jesus Christ, the one who died for me and the one who died for all for every one of us. And if we could just be thankful in our hearts, I know we all go through trials and tests, and there's times we don't understand why we have to go through them. And we try to understand them, but we can't understand what God allows in our hearts and lives. We just gotta be thankful that God knows what is best for us, Yes. And he will take us through. Yes. And I believe that the best is yet to come. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I'm so thankful to be here. I, uh, I often think I wasn't looking for him, but he came looking for me. And uh, I didn't know what was going on, but he came looking for me, and he never let go. And uh, I'm thankful. I wonder if you could sing. Do you know that song, John? He came looking for me. Would you play that? Please.
so far would anyone care that I'd soon be lost well I think my destruction was just a matter of time but Jesus appeared and said this one is mine now I'm safe from all harm cause he walked through that storm came looking for me he came looking Drifted so far, would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? Well, I think my destruction was just a matter of time. But Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine. Now I'm safe from all harm, cause he walked through the storm and came looking for me. He came looking. for me. darkness of night it closed off the light my heart sank with fear and my desperate cry rang out with fright but all I could see was no hope inside with faith all but gone I met the one who came looking for me he came looking for me Rescue my soul and to calm all my fears. Now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me. Yes, he came looking for me. He came looking.
Elijah did. Yes. I was thinking this morning about that very song. And then how great God is. And yeah. I was thinking, I don't know how much the population of the earth is, but the seven or eight million people. And I was thinking, God is able to save every one of them. This week I was singing this little chorus and I didn't know it, but this morning the Lord brought this back to my heart again. It's just a little chorus, but it means so much to me. Oh, I can't thank him. I can't thank him enough. Enough is not enough. I, what he has done for me and what he has done for you. He said it's free. He said it's free. Praise the Lord. He brought me out all right. He brought me out all right. Oh, he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. He brought me out all right oh he made a way for me oh he made a way for me oh he opened the door that I could not see he made a Oh, he brought me out all right. Oh, he brought me out all right. Oh, he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. He brought me out all right. Oh, he made a way for me oh he made a way for me oh he opened up the door that I could not see he made a way for me amen 
You know you're saved. Should by now, praise the Lord. Unless you're a beginner, so praise the Lord. But we're living here at the end time, and the bride should be coming to her completion. She's not going to be completed in the last 60 seconds before she leaves. And I'm thankful for the Lord for it, that He knows exactly what we have need of. Heavenly Father, as we come at this part of the service, Lord, I just pray, Lord, as we look into your word, Lord, that we may see, Lord, the time we're living in, Lord, what you're doing here on this earth at this time, getting a bride ready. And I thank you for it, Lord, in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated this morning. I was give it the title of a message this morning. It's what the Lord told Peter: "Feed my sheep." And we're going to look at that this morning. If you're got your Bible, let's turn to John chapter twenty-one. Time-wise, Jesus has already died on the cross of Calvary. He made himself known to his disciples, but then we find here, before he does, Peter, after God has 
used him to speak a revelation when Jesus asked one day, who do you think that I am? And he says, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Did Peter have the Holy Ghost then? No, but the Holy Ghost can give a word even though to someone that is not born again yet because Peter was not born again when Jesus spoke those words. And it shouldn't be strange to us because how did God speak to the prophets of old? They weren't born again. But yet God can speak, yes, to a person, but he can also speak to his child and much more to you and I that are born again that have the Spirit of God in this hour. And so Peter, after the Lord was, had died and rose, he got discouraged. And he's the chief apostle that God's going to use. He got to the point. Now he's seen all the miracles Jesus did. He's heard all the wonderful words Jesus spoke. But in verse 3, Simon Peter said to them, I go fishing. Sometimes you can get to that point where you might want to go fishing. Why? Because the pressures or the circumstances that's on life. And it wasn't only affecting Peter, because the other says, Well, we're going to. And to go fishing. First of all, Peter didn't have the Holy Spirit even at that point in time. Because Jesus didn't have Rosen for the last time to go on up. As we pick it up in verse 15 of chapter 21. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, Son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? And he says unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. Now Peter was looking for my love from the human standpoint. He loved Jesus because of all the wonderful things he's done. He heard some wonderful things, but he's loving the Lord. But the Lord's trying to tell him something. Because we're going to see on three occasions that Jesus is going to ask him, do you love me? But in the past, he had heard some things. And we'll get to that to just to show how the Lord is really moving and dealing with a ministry, whether it is in that age or in our time as a, as a type, if you want to. He says, yea, Lord, I know thou knowest I love thee. And so he didn't question, well, how do you love me, Peter? He directs to what the thought that Jesus wanted to relate to him. Feed my lambs. What are lambs? Actually, we'll read the next, the next three and then we'll get into it. And he said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. And he said unto him, Now not feed my lamb, feed my sheep. So why is he saying one in one account, feed the lambs and feed the sheep? The reason is that one day, when the grace age would start, there are lambs that are beginners. So the gospel needs to be preached to them. But the whole point of the ministry is not to just to feed baby food to lambs, but to feed his sheep. Now Jesus is saying, Peter, feed my sheep. And you can, if you be in Peter's shoes, what's he talking about really? And when he asked him, says, do you love me? Because Jesus was trying to prompt something in Peter how do you really love me? Or do you know what I've told you in the past? How to love me? In the past he told them, if you love me, keep my words and keep my sayings. 
Then we go on to verse 17 now. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Now Peter was getting a bit annoyed because he wasn't catching it. And Peter was grieved and caused because he had said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? I mean, here's Peter, if Peter could have uh, expressed some of his thoughts that's not expressed here, well, you know the thoughts of men, don't you know? <laughs> he could have probably said something like that, but Peter was wise enough not to say that. He said to him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Well, you know all things, Lord. Why are you asking me these questions? Because he wanted to drive home how we are to love the Lord. It's not like loving one another in a sense. When we say we love one another, is that the love that's in the world that all we love one another because you're wonderful? That's carnal, natural love. Every human vessel has it if they want to display it or to cultivate that kind of a love. But the love of God is not, cultivate, is not into the world, only to those that are born again. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus didn't say, well, now, Peter, here's how it is. He just told him, Peter, feed my sheep. So how was Peter going to feed the sheep? Remember, he didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. Yet Jesus told him a whole lot of things. But it was he heard it with his ears. But from what he heard in chapter 14, 15, and 16, when it came to just before Jesus approached him that way, Peter said, I'm going fishing. There was a disconnect somewhere. The disconnect because Peter, yes, he heard those words. They were needed to be to hear those words. When Peter and the 12 apostles were hearing the words of Jesus, it was like being under tutorship in their day. God can, it just goes to show that God can tutor someone that doesn't even have the Holy Ghost yet. Because Peter and the twelve apostles didn't have it because the day of Pentecost had not arrived yet. They heard, they understood from an intellectual point of view. And I'm sure Peter could have spoke to Thomas or, or John. Hey, you remember what Jesus said? But that was just on an intellectual point of view. But there would be a day that Peter would have the Holy Ghost. Now it's not, it moves from in the intellectual understanding into a revelatory understanding. Now we're going to go to John. We're still in the same chapter. Let's see what Jesus told him. John chapter 14. Starting at verse 15. Peter should have remembered prior to going to the cross... What Jesus said in verse 15 he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that's not the Ten Commandments. They put the word commandment there, but his sayings is the word. And Jesus said one day, the words that I speak, they're not mine, but they're my heavenly father. Now, the words of the heavenly father concerning the Ten Commandments, that was spoken in the days of Moses. But God was speaking now through his son, commandments, for the grace age, not for the law. Although we are to reflect the law, or it's, it's, it's a light, how we, well, it's a reflection if you want to. But we should be, we should be in a place where we, example, that the example of the law is displayed, not that we follow the law because we're saved by grace. All right. So now that Jesus had told them, if you love me, Jesus could have told when he was telling Peter, Peter, do you love me? 
And he says, well, Lord, you know I love thee. Yeah, but Peter, remember I told you, keep my, if you really love me, keep my words. Because God was holding a whole lot of importance of his word, fresh meat, that was being delivered to the apostles. And to make that fresh meat alive. The only way that, you, that Peter or anyone can have that fresh meat alive is if you have the Holy Ghost. It may tickle your mind through an intellectual point of view. Just like Peter and the twelve apostles, they heard the words of Jesus. It's about time that we understand what's taking place. Because there's been different moves of God. Since God restored from Martin Luther, Wesley, the different men that God has used even in, in, the, uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, and even up to Brother Branham and to Brother Jackson, an apostle that was on the scene. It all plays out in every move. There's some that hear it from an intellectual point of view, and some hear it from a Holy Ghost point of view. Now, when Peter heard some of those things, or the things that Jesus, when he preached to the, the crowd, that when he fed the 5,000, and the different places he went to, there was not just 12 people listening to Jesus. They heard some things. But how many went in the upper room? Or drawn to the upper room? All right. So then in verse 16, he says, I will pray... The Father, and he shall send you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now there's something we could bring in at the same time concerning the Godhead. Jesus lives in me. That's when he's not what he said here. He said, I'm going to send you the comforter. You're born but one time, and that's by your Heavenly Father and the same Heavenly Father as Jesus is born with. But Christ dwells in me. And some of the time it's presented as if Christ is everywhere and has been placed in you. That's an erroneous interpretation. Christ dwells in you by revelation. I'm going to use a natural example this morning. We've all seen families, and a man has a son. And then as he's going about doing some work and so forth, and some people observing him that knows him, well, you're like your father. But he's not your father. But he has the same attributes and traits in him. But that don't make him the, the father. And the father doesn't make the father the son. How many sees the difference? Because the Satan would like to twist little things a little bit. The thing that Jesus actually lives in you. He lives in you by revelation of the characteristic that the Holy Ghost that he's given to you lives in you. You don't have two fathers. You're not born by Jesus and you're not born, or born by the Spirit of God. You're, we have one spirit. All right. So he says, otherwise he should have said here, and I pray the Father, and I will come to you, and I will be li I'll live in you. Now to begin with, to drive that point home. If Jesus can live in everyone, as sometimes it's portrayed as he's in me, as if it's, he's part of him left from glory and is in you, and they use the phrase, the phrase very common, and they, the, here's how they present it across. Well, I, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Yes, but how do you see that oneness? Because the same verse in the same spot, it says, Father, make them one like we are one. Are you into everybody also? It's time to wake up. But the characteristic that's in you, if the Spirit of Christ is in you, which is the, the, the characteristics of God, it's also in every one. In that manner, it's of the same purpose. 
But there's only one Father. There's only one that sees everything and everywhere. And sometimes from old teachings of the past prior to Brother Branham or even the days of Brother Branham, when you say that Jesus doesn't hear everything, they get defensive. Oh, yeah. Even in this message, they'll argue with you. If Jesus can hear everything, I and my Father are one, and make them one like we are one, can you hear everything? Now, not everybody has probably has access to TV and things like that. But there's an old space show that's on there. They call it The Borg. They're simulated. Everybody reads everybody's thoughts. The bride is not the Borg. And if you don't understand what that means, it means everybody don't hear everybody's thoughts. Only one that does that. And he knows the secrets of the heart even Satan can't know. It says only God sees the heart. I think it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8, somewhere in that vicinity. He only, when it says only, that excludes Jesus and everybody, angels, anything. Only God sees the thought. Aren't you glad that he's the only one that sees it? Praise the Lord. I didn't get too far yet. Okay. All right, so I'll pray the Father that he shall send you, give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Why can't the world receive that spirit of truth? Because the seed line's not there. God knows who will receive the Holy Ghost. And he doesn't give them the Holy Ghost. Well, I hope it works out for these, for these ones. There's not one that's going to be lost. Amen. God don't make a mistake. Yet, while that is taking place, Satan likes to have those crowd around to hear the same thing. And it's, oh, everybody's, we all have it. Time's going to prove whether you do or not. All right. The world cannot receive because it sees him not. How do they, how come they can't see the Spirit of God? He's invisible. And that Spirit is not your figment of your imagination as you may have a thought come into your mind. It's the inspiration that comes to the child of God. That's the difference between the two. You know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now, how is Jesus going to come to us? Because Jesus spoke a little later. He speaks about that the Holy Spirit will take the things of mine and show it to you. He didn't say, now, wait a minute, comforter, I'm going to come and show myself myself to everyone. So this idea, looking at Christ living in you as being the Holy Ghost itself, yes, it's an identification characteristics of your Heavenly Father, but you are born of the Spirit of God, but one time. We all have to say, we have it by measure. All right, let's go on to a little further now. We're going to go to, to John Chapter 14, verse 23. And Jesus entered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him, and we will come and make our abode with him. Now see, there's the scripture, Jesus and God dwells in me. It's the attributes that the Comforter takes and puts it in there that dwells with you. It's just like the man, the son, has certain re reflect of, reflection of his father's characteristic. That don't mean the son is the, the father and the father is the son in the natural realm. And he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the words ye hear are not mine. Now here's where Jesus is making a differentiation here. He says, the words that he hears, 
the origin of it, of headship, is a great eternal spirit. Jesus is the head of the church, is given to Jesus first, and then is when Jesus doesn't come directly and tell you and everything that, that needs to be known, he delegates it to the angel that sends it down. So he goes through a form of headship before the word comes down to our, the earthly recipient here on the earth. And these things I have spoken to you, yet press it with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. In other words, there Peter should have remembered that, even though he had got it from an intellectual point of view before, ha being, before having the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost when Jesus said to you, love me. That, that he, did, he should have said, well, he should have said, Lord, I don't have the comforter yet. And I know when he comes, he'll bring it to me and then, and then I'll know how really how to love you. Really, that's what he should have said. All right. Now, as we go from there, we're going to go to John chapter 15, which is close. And in John chapter 15, starting at the 20th verse. Well, I'll read the verse 26 first. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send to you from the Father. He didn't say, I'm coming to you. Now that's the actual part of the Spirit that is sent to you and I, is that Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the, the Spirit that you and I are born with. Even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Now, if we go back up to verse 20, he says, Remember the words I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. And if they have persec persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And that goes for every move of God. Not just in the days of the apostles. Even in 2017. Who hates you? The world? The sinner of the street? The, the, the denominational church, they don't even know we exist. But it's those of your ranks. And if they have kept my sayings, they will keep your sayings also. Because if the word that comes from the Father that gives it to Jesus, that sends it to an angel, and gives it to a servant to speak, then that's just as much as God's word as if God would have spoken right out of the air directly. It's the same word. All right. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. The reason they don't recognize the present day word, because they don't know him that sent you. Sent him. Sent me, sorry. If I had not come and spoken unto them, and boy, this drives the movement in this hour a while. If I had not come and spoken to them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. The word that comes on ground, fresh meat. When God brings fresh meat on ground, and people reject it, Discount it. But say something else, or it's, or it's false, or whatever, whatever it is, as they're refusing it. Then they have no cloak to hide themselves behind, because now truth is on, on the scene. In Revelation, I don't have to turn it, I'll just quote, Revelation chapter 3, verse 3 says... And, and there's a lot right here that I picked up. Sometimes the simplest part of, a, of, a, of the word in that phrase identifies exactly the spirit of things. 
In Revelation chapter 3, verse 3 says, Remember therefore how thou hast received. How did you receive it? And to bring it up to your eyes, you can see, did you receive it by your intellectual mind or by the Holy Ghost? Remember, therefore, how thou has received things of the past. That is how the Holy Ghost has dealt with you, that you receive things new and old while under tutorship. Now, things new and old, under tutorship, Can someone under tutor receive things new and old? He sure can, but he's not the originator of it. There's headship involved. The Father gives it to Jesus. Jesus sends it down to a servant on the earth to speak it. Not to the five, but to whom he will have leadership with. When the early church started, it was Peter, the head, that God was going to use as the main spokesman. But then when the Jews rejected as a whole, and the Lord now got Paul to go to the Gentile, Paul was the headship. There was other apostles. But there's one headship. Because if there's two or three that are all on the same level, everybody's in the headship, you're going to have confusion. But God knows the one that he can trust to bring his word, what it actually means and what it is for and the hour that it's for. But oh, the fivefold ministry today, they're the headship of Jesus. Yes, it is expressed in it, but there will be a main voice. If you heard that apostle right, when he comes on ground, he's going to scream loud enough forceful enough, not speak like a mouse, and it'll cause those that have an intellectual revelation to reject it, and those that have the Holy Ghost will start seeing it. Now, not everybody sees all at the same time. Oh, no. Because some may only hear it later, or depending what frame of mind you're into a certain service, then somewhere God will bring it forth. Now the fresh meat, that carcass that we see in Matthew chapter 20, 24. It's not the apostle that gets the, ca- the carcass or the fivefold ministry that takes the carcass to bring it for fresh meat on the earth. It is God himself that takes that meat and he brings it. And fresh meat is not meat of old that's in the refrigerator it's still meat, right? Like I mentioned before, I had been to a grocery store. And sometimes you can be deceived by what's fresh meat. Because the butcher can take some old meat, he'll dab it into blood, and on the, on the surface it looks like fresh meat. It has a look like fresh meat. So the thing that's been revealed, tin. 15, 20, 40 years ago is meat, but not fresh meat. I'm here to tell you this morning, that is not your fresh meat for this hour. That's thus say the Lord. God has a word for this hour. Now in that same revelation, chapter 3, How has thou received and heard? How, and this, although it is in that church age, that's not the Lady of Sin church age, it applies for all the churches. How did you receive what you received? And what you heard? Hold fast to what, now I don't mean throw it away because it, it's no longer useful. It is useful. Because like Jesus told Peter, feed my lambs. If lamb comes in, you've got to feed the lambs. But then if there's sheep, 
We're not in a sowing time. We're in a reaping time. The bride's coming to her completion. So hold fast and repent. Why? You could make a mistake. Why did he put the word repent in there? Because they, if they didn't hold fast, there's a time frame that God would allow some to turn and to see what God's doing in their hour. If therefore thou shalt not watch. Watch is not watching the gospels and the doctrines of, the, of Jesus, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the doctrines of the apostle. That should, yes, that is necessary as you're going through tutorship. But when you arrive here, when he says watch, he's not talking about watching for your soul. That has been from day one on the day of Pentecost. But when Jesus is speaking about watching in the book of Revelation and in, the, in Matthew and in Luke, he's talking about watching his coming. And if you're not concerned and we're just happy in what we have received, while we're, trying, we're waiting for the Lord to bring something, you can wait till here till the moon turned green. Because God has done some things in the last 14 years. All right. If therefore thou shalt not watch, not concern about the Lord's coming, just concern about cleaning up your life, and that's very important too. But if that's all you're concerned in this hour, you're under the eagle hour. What is a watchman? He's on the lookout for something. He's not looking in the yard where everybody's at to watch for something to come. He's looking out there. Whether it's an approaching enemy, a false doctrine, or whether the Lord's going to be bringing something. We're in the eagle age right now. And the eagle age is a foresight seeing bird. He sees ahead. It's the spirit of prophecy. In Revelation, uh, okay, he says, If therefore thou wilt not watch, I will come unto thee as a thief, and, that, and thou shalt not know the hour. Because when, if we refuse his word, he's going to let you start to fall asleep. When you don't recognize your hour, as you start walking, the light moves away from you and you start now to walk in darkness. Well, I don't believe in false doctrine in darkness. No, but yes, where God has brought, seems, seemingly has brought you to, Walking in the light, I see the light. But if you refuse to walk any further, that light moves on, and you're just staying there waiting for something to come. And what's holding you back and not seeing what's something to come? Because you have some ideas that God doesn't want. That's straightforward as I can put it. This bride is going to be put together by the Word of God. Believe in the same thing. Not a different men's having their different ideas and hoping everything is going to work out because we all work with one another. If you don't see your hour, I'm telling you right now, just like the brand of movement, what caused them to be in darkness? They believe the doctrine of Jesus Christ. They believe the doctrines of the apostles. They even now some of them even believe the the message of Brother Branham, of the seals and so forth. But yet there was something in their makeup they would not want they were receiving a revelation by intellectual point of view had they had the Holy Ghost they would have seen the same thing that the apostle would have been seeing and so therefore as time goes on the brand of movement it's sad to say is getting darker and darker and darker 
Not dark overnight, but as God's moving, as the light of God's moving away, it is getting darker. And like we said last week, concerning 1 John chapter 1, verse 6 to 7, if, if you walk in the light, as He is in the light, in the hour that you're living in, not the past, then the blood of Christ cleanses you. But if I'm not walking in the light, further light, does the blood cleanse for you? Well, I don't know. It's not applicable to the true believer. It's applicable to tares or intellectuals. That's the difference. Well, are you calling those, all those wonderful people that had the wonderful message in Brother Branham tares? Well, what do you want to call them? Bride? They have refused him that speaketh from heaven. And so therefore, it, God gives them the eyes of slumbering. Not overnight being blinded. Boom, I don't see anymore. But as God moves away... They, and they don't know it that they're starting to see less and less of where God's at. Now, brother, I read something that Brother Jackson talked about. Not that I need to quote Brother Jackson and things like that. But I found that what he said made sense. The watchman terminology... Is pertaining to a revelated ministry in the end time that will clean up, finish, and bring the bride of Christ to maturity. And when I looked at that, then I then I, then I start to realize in the days that he was walking, or even the days that Brother Brandon was walking. As men was under tutorship. As God moves from one servant to the other, because now they are God's going to hold them accountable. What did you hear? And how did you see it? Because in amongst that group is going to be ministers that's going to be moving forward to fill the ranks. And there's a lot of those that are preaching wants to be watchmen, but the Word of God exposes them. What is a watchman? He sees, he's on the wall, watching for the Lord's coming. So he goes on to say, the brother Jasper goes on to say, so these watchmen, they are, call, they are God called special servants. They have a vision and understanding of what the will of God is, not just of the past. They have that. They're going to be taught by God, they're going to know their calling. And they are all going to see their position in the body of Christ. And when it comes to unity, these things of watchmen seen together, it is time to a world event. That's why even in 2017, yes, the watchmen are under God's trying them out. Those that are watchmen. They've been tested, been proved, or God has put them through all kinds of tests. And the would-be watchmen are not going to cut it, because they're just going to stay to the point they're at, and they can't see no further. Not that they have to... Now, sometimes they, you fall on that, the one in Matthew chapter 13, 52. And every scribe will bring things out of his treasure, new and old. 
Not every scribe is going to be hitting heaven and God giving them a personal revelation for the bride. Just as when you're under tutorship, you receive things new and old, it was under headship. So will the watchman be under a headship. And the headship of the one that's on the earth is Jesus is the head of it. All right. So this is time with a world event. What world event will that be? When Zion is restored. When Jerusalem has their temple again. At that time, the watchman will see eye to eye. And I can hear those listening on the internet. Oh, you're trying to make something of yourself. You're trying to be that one. I can only say what God gives me. I'm not responsible for others. Yes, I feel a, a burden to warn the movement. You're starting to fall asleep. Because the reason you're falling asleep, you're rejecting what God's doing in 2017. And by what you preach and what you neglect that you don't want, shows who you are. If you stood up at the pulpit and never said a thing, hey, nobody would know. Well, don't try to claim to be a watchman if you're just preaching the doctrines of Jesus Christ and the gospels of the apostles. The epistle, sorry, the, the doctrines of the apostles. Well, you're wrong. The fivefold ministry in this hour will have, yes, a concern for the attributes of Jesus Christ, which is the inner man. But if you're not watching, uh, as being a watchman to see the Lord's coming. Now, watching for the Lord's coming is not, well, I'm waiting. He's adding and bringing things in revelation that gives you a little bit more understanding how close we're getting and some events that's going to be involved in that coming. And that part there is being dressed with a revelatory garment. Well, praise the Lord. In Mark, he warns, he says, in Mark thirteen thirty-seven. And what I say unto you all, watch. Now, I even told them in their day to watch, but they knew the time and the season was, wasn't there. But they still were to watch, and God would drop in a few little things like he did to the Apostle Paul. They were concerned one day about the rapture. And so Paul spoke in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15, The Lord shall descend from heaven for the shout. That came way back from the Apostle Paul back then. That was fresh meat when he was brought on ground. But they didn't understand the whole scope of it. Because they didn't know how the shout was going to come and the voice of the archangel. It was just open that that existed. But we are the generation that's, that's heard that already. We haven't heard the voice of the archangel yet. But that shout is still going on. And sometimes when you look over the land, it seems like... Well, I think we got pretty near the, the shout. We're just now waiting for the... Miracle war, the temple, and, and the Ezekiel war, and, and then the opening of the seventh seal. There's more to it that God has brought on ground. You're starting to fall asleep. He goes on to say in Matthew chapter 13, 37, And what I say unto you all, watch. Watch ye and pray, lest you enter into temptation. What is the temptation? Oh, I want to go to a dance hall. Oh, 
maybe if I start drinking some beer, not in excess, that might be okay. That's not the temptation. The temptation is what, look what happened to the church age where the woman that had got them to fall asleep, the temptation was to organize, to stop in your tracks, to not see anymore. That darkness overcomes them. So watch that darkness ought not overcome you is what it is. Lest you pray, lest you enter into temptation. It's in the Philadelphia church age, I guess in verse Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. In, in that hour, the Spirit was saying, Keep thee from the temptation, the hour of temptation, the hour to stop, the hour to organize. But, oh, but we're not an organization. Yes, but you have stopped. Don't say you have not. Now, they can be looking at us and saying, well, oh, they got a revelation every day and they're, they're just off in, in error. Somebody somewhere has the truth. And somebody somewhere ought to be bringing things on ground. And somebody somewhere, because the Lord didn't stop and he sent the eagle home and we're just now waiting for that seventh seal. Yep. All we we got to concentrate of, of how we should live our lives. Hey, like I mentioned before, the doctrines of the apostles was all restored by 1963. It's almost 55 years. What have you done? Has it perfected you yet? In the way you think that it should be doing? And if that's the means to get the bride ready, if that's the only means, you need both. Yes, this for the inner man, and also the garment that you're being dressed with. There's many in this movement. Don't see and accept that the centuries ended in 1948 when Israel became a nation. They don't believe that there's three watches that Jesus spoke about. Or especially in Luke chapter 12, verse 38. What about if I come in the second watch or the third watch? And they put it off. Oh, well, that's just your idea. I'll stick around. We'll see if the idea is real or not. I'm saying to you, you're going to be blind. Because what did he say after it? If the good man had been watching, not in the days of Peter, not in the days of Martha and Luther, in 2017, it's happening now in this third watch. Because he's talking about, what if I come to second or the third? And after he mentions the third, he says, and if the good man of the house had known the hour I would come... Not concerning about his inner man, but have you been watching what, I, what the Lord has been bringing on ground? They haven't. And so their house is going to be broken. So how's the house going to be broken? A preacher's there ministering saying, we need no further. We, well, we go further. We've got to get it in Brother Branham's sermons. In the contenders. We're just bringing out the more beauty of it. It has to be consistent with what Brother Jackson brought. Or Brother Branham brought. That's just another buzzword to keep people in line. Brother Jackson brought things that Brother Branham never touched. And you won't find that it's in line with it. Sometime God opens some things, it's in that certain area. You can't follow the thread. It does, yes, make the whole picture complete. The miracle war. Brother Banner never touched such a thing. Is it consistent? Yes, it is. But if we're looking at being consistent, well, here he says something here, and then, and then we can draw from there, and that, that that's consistent. You're being blinded. You're not trusting the Holy Ghost. You're trusting your intelligence. Well, speaking pretty sharp this morning. That's because I got a toothache. 
I got to get a wisdom teeth pulled out there tomorrow. See, I'll lose all my wisdom tomorrow. Now, praise the Lord. It is God that is feeding the meat. Because it comes from the Spirit of God. And a lot don't realize you're living in that third watch. And don't understand what that watch is about. They don't want even want to know. Now there's something that should, that's not right. And in Revelation chapter 1, when we see how that Jesus is dressed with gray hair and sash about his, he's shown as judge. And they don't know when that is. That might be after the rapture, I think, they may think. You think? Uh, uh, they said, well, all's going to happen up there. I'm not saying this to get you to be mad or upset. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1, it says, when at his coming, he's going to judge the quick and the dead. You can't put the quick in heaven. And if you don't know what it is, because you don't want to know what it is to begin with. But there's our scripture, there is pointing to when that is all transpiring. It's in that time factor of the seventh seal, or the half hour time factor, if you want to. Can you imagine arriving to when the seventh seal is broke? Oh, we hear the voice of the archangel. Oh, the thunders are sounding. What's this about judging people here? The living ones? That's your quick. When Jesus brings that judgment seat, period of time, it's all done at the same time. He's in heaven dealing with the deceased bride saints, but that angel on the behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ is doing it on those that are alive at that moment of time while he's doing it in heaven. Well, we don't bother with that. We don't need that. That's why your house is going to be broken. There's going to be other things God's going to reveal up that hour. And you're going to be walking in more darkness and more darkness as we arrive to the time of that seventh seal being broken. You know what it sounds like to me? They have more confidence that it was a man that brought things that they're depending on. Like I mentioned earlier, how have you received it? Look back in the days God was teaching. Was it by the Holy Ghost or by because you saw the idea of things that was being brought on ground? Well, that's not possible. Yes, it is. Look what happened to Peter. He didn't have the Holy Ghost. While Jesus was speaking of those things concerning the Comforter, he could understand and hear. What he, he heard the words that were being said, and he knew Jesus was a man of God, so he trusted in Jesus in that respect. But Jesus wanted to go further to prepare him one day that when he would have the Holy Ghost, it's not because I walk with Jesus, but because the Spirit that's in me takes the words of Jesus and makes it real. And that same Spirit of that, that comforter is here on ground even at this hour and he's speaking things in this hour that is just as important as what he spoke when he walked here on earth. When he worked here on earth, he spoke the words for your and I salvation for the gospel. Here he's speaking in this hour to you and I get ready for a bride to leave here. Well, I don't know. Yes, I do know. Revelation chapter 16, 15. I'll just quote there and bring it to a close. 
Behold, I come as a thief. He's warning us. He's going to be coming as a thief. Well, Jesus, that's not nice, sneaking up on us. Blessed is he that watches. For what? His coming. And keep us his garments with an S plural. Why would it be plural? Because we put on the blood of Jesus Christ is given to you and I. But the fine linen, we put it, the fine linen is that we have to put on by the Spirit of God to dress us with. So that's why his garment is with an S. Lest you walk naked, lest you walk with a mini skirt of fine linen, and they see your shame. Because you haven't been walking in the hour. It's just like, for instance, I, I remember when we were touching the Godhead when I first started out. What makes you naked and ashamed? Not that this will ha would happen. Let's say a Trinitarian and a oneness dies and goes into heaven. And the majority of the bride knows that there's the Godhead. And the Trinitarian comes around and says, Hey, uh, where's the other two? He's going to look foolish. Na he's naked of an understanding. And if we hold back in this hour, you're going to be naked of, not of everything, but concerning the watching of the events coming up for his coming. Well, remember, therefore, how, how you received it. Sometimes you may need to go back and reflect. How did you receive the word? Because you trusted that, well, Brother Jackson was a good man. He, he was an apostle, and whatever he says, uh, I can see the picture. You may have received it from an intellectual point of view, not from a Holy Ghost point of view. Because that same Holy Ghost that made the true believer sees it, he continues on because he's leaning on that Holy Ghost and not on the image of a man or things he heard that it's... I'm not saying that just to make people feel miserable, but somewhat we have to examine. You can't use the criteria of the past to see what it's doing now of a servant that God used. How did the, those that trusted in the things that Brother Brown's the prophet and so forth, and yes, they've gone to all kinds of ways and everything else, and they've gone to all kinds of crazy things. There's still some good people that sees it and holds the message to a point. Well, then when God moved on, they were looking more at the man because it shows to me they had an intellectual understanding of what he was saying rather than the Holy Ghost. Because had they been having the Holy Ghost to see it, they would have seen that apostle on the scene for the last, that was on ground for 40 years or so, around 40 years. You understand this morning what I'm trying to say? You can't put trust in the arms of flesh. doesn't matter if a man's a prophet or an apostle. God allowed Brother Brown to say a dual statement, didn't he? Did Brother Jackson say some things that came wrong? Now, it's very, I'm not diminishing the man. I believe he was the apostle. God used him to feed the bride. But God also allowed him to say some things too. And if you're hanging on the words just to prove your revelation, it exposes you. But that Holy Ghost, if you're trusting, and a picture's brought before you. Now, if something is brought that's erroneous, the Holy Ghost is obligated to bring things to your, to your eyes in time to see that's false and that's true. That's where the trust lies is in the Spirit of God. Well, praise the Lord.
That song that Brother sang this morning, Another Wave of Glory. The world has closed their eyes and are sleeping through the prophecy unfolding every day. It happened in the days of Brother Branham, but it can't happen in the days of Brother Jackson. Don't deceive yourself. It is also happening in this hour. Does that mean everybody's got to preach their new revelation? No, that's not the point. The point is, why are you rejecting what God's doing in this hour? Personality? Envy? Pride? Not thought that, the, that you thought you have certain men in, in mind that should be doing it? There's a prophecy that came here. And God reinitiated it in 2014 again. Do not choose whom I will choose because God says it's going to not end well for you. I always said, well, that's, anybody can prophesy anything. Then stick around. Watch how it plays out. And not saying it with a braggadocious, just trying to warn. It's time we get our human manipulations out of the way and start seeing truth together. Do I know everything? No. Can I make mistakes? Yes. So can any servant of God. But I'm thankful that he did show us some things. And there's people seeing it. The only thing that troubles me, if the majority of the Brandon movement, very few came out and saw the next stage. Is that happening again? Or God's not allowing that this time. The signs that I see seems to be going in the same direction. The same thing in the days of Brother Branham. Did, all, did the denominational church come flocking in? In the days of Luther, in the days of Wesley, in the days of the different, uh, those men that, that God used to, to bring forth the gospel a little further along. God tries us all. Well, I'm still happy because I have peace inside. I know the Comforter is leading. And you can't bring things out. Well, oh, tonight, I'll well, see, I've got to get something for next week. Let's, oh, this sounds exciting here. I'll, I'll go on this. You poor chicken. Feeding on chicken food. God doesn't work that way. Sometimes he brings you things that, like the Apostle Paul, he said, sometimes he didn't have anything and he would preach on what God has given him. He didn't have to have a, a new revelation every meeting. But then again, Paul, you can't have, you can only have one revelation now, Paul. Yeah. It's he that takes the carcass of the meat off the carcass and he brings it forth to be sent to the earth to be heard. Not the other way around. The servant grabs a piece of carcass and he's doing it. You got the cart before the horse there. Well, uh, okay, I'm just going to be going rambling on. I realize it. I see in your face there. Yes, dinner's coming along, so I praise the Lord. Let's just stand at this time. So when Jesus said, Peter, feed my sheep. Peter fed the lambs. But when we see the epistle of Peter, Peter didn't say, well, and Jesus said, and Jesus said, and Jesus said. God gave him some fresh meat too. It's what makes you alive. 
is when you preach the same thing over and over and over and over again, you're no better off in a denominational church. And sometimes they change the flavor of it, so they, they bring in stories that makes you so exciting. It sounds good, but it's the same thing. Nothing wrong with preaching the same thing. Please, don't get me wrong. But if you're never looking, watching for His coming, then there is something wrong. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning. I just pray, Lord, I just ask, Lord, that, that you give us eyes to see in this hour, Lord, the things that you were doing in this time frame. Lord, we are not neglecting anything that you have brought before in the past, Lord. We cherish those things. Now, Lord, as we would now dismiss, not dismiss, but Lord, come through this part of the service. I just thank you, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Have musicians come in case someone would still have a need. This is the evening time It's later than you
There's going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet. Lord. You look content. Praise Lord. Love casteth out all fear. The love and the revelation of his word casts out any doubt on what God does for you. That's where it's done. Praise Lord. Let's just stand at this time. Amen. Brother Dale, if you would dismiss in the word of prayer. Amen. Lord bless each one.